Islam, 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 everybody. I'm back with another episode. These are the Morris Degrees. It's the God. It's the God of knowledge. LDI. LDI. God of knowledge. Tamari. L. D. I. B. But to make it sound good, I say Tamari L. B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Today, I got part two of a segment I call Dispelling Red Herrings. Yes. I have a segment in these little Morris degrees called Dispelling Red Herrings. And today, let me get my gorgeous face, my gorgeous mug off the stream. Today, we dealing with uh, the kind of this, the red herring that they call part and partial, or part and parcel. Like I said on part one, a lot of uh, a lot of red herrings that existed when I came into the Morris movement. Maybe 10 years ago, a lot of the same stuff still exists today, man. So this argument, whether the prophet said you are part and partial of this said government, or did he say you are part and parcel of this said government? So we're going to take a look at it look at it and we're going to give it a real scholarship, a real intimate type of dissecting, should I say, to make sure we understood what happened. See, for a brief history of, of what's going on, the Morris Scientific of America was infiltrated way back in the day down there a hundred years ago, it was infiltrated and overthrew. And part of uh, the teachings that the prophet brought before us, a lot of that stuff was altered, you know what I'm saying, by COINTEL prerogative. And you can you can um, look at some of these guys like they still exist right now today. Trust me, I have talked to some of these guys personally, and you you understand right off the bat that these were the the spirits that the prophet was up against at that time. Because, man, like, talking about the five principles, man, some of these people, when you approach them, like, none of them come at you with not one principle. The first principle is supposed to be love. So you would think that these people, understanding that you know who you are and you're coming into your birthright and you understanding who you are, you'll think that they'll be happy for you. I, I've seen more uh, people from the extended family, the extended Asiatic family, be more happy for me understanding that I now know who I am than some of the so-called sheiks and grand sheiks that in some of these places they, they call temple. I personally had somebody come at me uh, when he seen that I uh, was using my title and he came at me and was like, what temple you belong to, fool? And I'm like, really? Like, and I told him I belong to the temple of self. 
And he like, eh, wrong answer. What temple you belong to, fool? And I'm like, man, you know what? I ain't, I ain't was talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, matter of fact, you about to be blocked and I drop you off my contact list. Like, I, I, I don't have time for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, the Moors who believe that the temple is the way to our salvation, like, then for a huge, huge, huge awakening, you know what I'm saying? Because the only temple that matters and the only temple that ever mattered was the temple itself. And yeah, it's good for to have a physical temple somewhere on land somewhere that's adhering to all the five principles and carrying out the prophet's instruction as they were taught. But we don't have that today. Very few. I don't I don't know of none personally. But I hear that they have a couple of temples out here that's doing what they have to do. But me personally, I haven't encountered not one one uh, temple that's, you know, standing on really what the, 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 the prophet brought us. Like uh, so as a result of this overthrowing and stuff and some of these uh, lessons being uh, tampered with and, and a lot of miseducation came out of it. So one of the red herrings, uh, uh, one of the arguments to keep, one of the arguments to keep you uh, kind of bickering between each other and going back and forth between each other is the part and partial and part and parcel argument. So we're going to deal with that today and hopefully, inshallah, we uh, get some clarity, you know, and hopefully we uh, uh, know from this point on, you know, where does the prophet, uh, what was the prophet leaning toward when he made the statement that he made? And how could we know for a fact that the statement that he made was pertaining to, uh, or was it, for one, can we understand that the, the, what the prophet brought us in the first place was to uplift us, right? He brought us something to raise us up from a dead state to, you know, he brought us back to the table of family. He brought us back to the nation and said, look, not only should we be accepted for being back at this table, but let it be known that we actually created this table. So our birthright is much more than you just accepting us back to the human family. Our birthright lies in us claiming our estate and being the people that the Most High put on this planet to be. And the ones that make sure to take care, you know, the, the planet and the people that reside in the planet. Uh, should I say domicile in the planet? You know, that, that that's what being the mothers and fathers of humanity is. It's about, you know what I'm saying, spreading love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And at all costs, doing the things that we need to do to live as our forefathers and foremothers did, you know. We was builders, you know, we were scientists, we were knowledgeable people. So let's deal with this, right? First, he said, I said, you are a part. So this is uh, Last Law Dictionary, uh, fourth edition, 
like the you gonna know, use fourth edition or or older, like third, second, or first edition. Nothing newer, but I like using fourth edition because you know, it's kind of like putting everything in perspective. So let's read part. According to Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. Law defin definition of part is an integral portion, something essentially belonging to a larger whole, that which together with another or others make up the whole. And it gives case law, Bank of Trenton versus Norris. Then they said a portion, a share. A par part, one or two duplicate originals of a conveyance or covenant. Pay attention to that covenant part because I believe that's the uh, rightful. Uh, I think that's the the actual uh, family of what the, the, the prophet was talking about, he was talking about the covenant. You was being part, uh, you were part of a covenant, the other being called a counterpart. So that would be, for example, that would be like the treaty of peace and friendship. Your part as Moors to have part of the treaty as more and the other part of it is for the Europeans it's like an agreement so both nations had to agree in order for it to be a treaty you get it so the covenant the other being called the counterpart so that's why Moors always refer to treaty and the constitution as one because it's all a part of a whole it's not just the constitution but you can't just use the constitution especially for us you can't use the constitution without the treaty of peace and friendship so also in composition now let's look up what composition means because a lot of people don't understand what they're saying in this law book because they, they don't get it. So we're going to look up what composition means. Definition of composition. There we go. As you can see, I already researched. I never teach something that I don't already have understanding of. Hopefully, I can spread my wisdom and give people an understanding of it too. But a composition is a noun. And the first definition of composition is the nature of something's ingredients. Constituent, the way in which a whole or mixture is made up. So, check this out. To my understanding, according to the first definition of composition, the noun definition, the first noun definition of composition, is saying the nature of something's ingredients, the way in which a whole mixture is made up. So when I go back to part, it say also in the nature of something's ingredients or the way something's made up. Partial or incomplete as part payment or part performance. Now here, really, if you have any understanding of what you just read, the, the red herring argument of part and partial is over already. It's over already because they're telling you that part and partial it's really the same thing. It's saying also in the composition and the makeup of the 
ingredient and the mixture thing partial or incomplete part is partial or incomplete part of something is partial or incomplete as a part payment partial payment part performance partial performance it's the same thing so being that El Hai Sharif Abdul Ali being as wise as he was being ahead of so many of us more do you think that this man peace be upon him was so ignorant to say that you are part and partial of this said government knowing that part and partial means the same exact thing could he have saved yourself two words and just say you are part of this said government or say you are partial of this said government either way he didn't have to say you are part and partial because part and partial means the same thing that's what the law book just said it means the same thing partial part partial it's in the definition it means the same thing Let's go down here and read and see what partial says. Partial, relating to or constituting a part. Really? Constituting a part. Not complete, not entire or universal, not general or total. So, you're incomplete. You're not complete, you're incomplete. The same thing they just said up here. Incomplete, not complete. Does incomplete and not complete mean the same thing? I believe it do. Not complete. Incomplete, right here. So, just according to that, the argument is already over. But I'm gonna go further into the teaching. So I think uh, studious Morris could see what the prophet was revealing when he said that you are part and parcel of this said government. I mean, it, it just it just worked itself out. If you study, you'll see that it worked itself out. So here go Parcel. Now, a lot of ignorant Moors like to throw out the fact that the word Parcel means a small package or a bundle. So, he said, so they said, the prophet wouldn't say that you're a small package or a bundle of this said government. No. There's another definition of parcel right here. And there's one that supersedes the second definition of par parcel. Tell Marie, how you know that? I'll tell you how I know that. Because they put this one first. Okay, they could have just been putting it first. Well, if they were putting it first, then this parcel V and this parcel N. The N comes before the V, so if we were doing it in alphabetical order, the N would be on top. So people who understand scholarship understand how things are put, especially if you understand when you're trying to make a uh, differentiation of what's greater or what's the more important, you always go to the first thing somebody said. You want to know what somebody got on their mind? Pay attention to the first thing that come out their mouth. That's how that works. That's 
how a real scholarship works. That's how that's how you understand that, right? So the first parcel says to divide an estate. So when the prophet said you are part and parcel to divide an estate and a state with this said government. Right? Because that's what the whole treaty of peace and friendship was all about. Let Europeans come on your estate and doing business and paying you for it. Don't forget the part about paying you for it. But it's your estate that you divided with them. That's what make you parcel of this said government. It's not that you a small portion or a small package or a small bundle. That's ignorance. It's just because your part sell of this said government to divide the state and they even put it in italics conditions conditions look at it it's in italics you know to pay attention to italic conditions so already the red herring has been has been disqualified just by studying, you know, and if you want to get more into detail, uh, on RV Bay publication, right, on RV Bay publication, they have a, a PDF called Clearing Up Part and Partial part the parcel where you can do I'm not gonna you know teach some something that somebody else already took the time out to educate you on like that but you definitely can go uh, definitely can go to RB Bay publication it's, it's in association with Morris Heritage School and History School MorrisNationalPublicRecords.com. You can go to find this documentation clearing up part and partial, part and parcel. You can even just type in part and parcel on Google, and this PDF will show up. But to, to give more credence to what how we know the prophet is talking about to divide a state, we have to go look up a state. Now when you look up a state, it becomes very clear because the the, the state, the a state, like I said, in parcel, what I said in parcel, what was in the talents, condition. To divide a state, it's your condition. When you come to the state, you understand that the interest which anyone has in land, the condition, you can replace interest with condition, or in any other subject of property, the condition that you have in land, or any other subject, or any other subject of property. Let me give you case law. And they say, an estate in lands, tenements, and hereditaments signifies such interest, conditions, again, replace interest with condition, as the tenant has therein. Okay, you know, you always have to replace uh, interest with conditions on a third definition, because they say, the condition or circumstance in which the owner stands, and you see they got stands in a tab. So you go look up and see what stands mean, because a lot of people don't know how to stands on nothing. <laughs> With regard to his property, 
And they say, in a sense, a state, quote unquote, is constantly used in conveyances in connection with the words white, quote unquote, title, quote unquote, and interest, quote unquote, and is in a great degree synonymous with all of them. So a state means interest. It means title. It means right. Right? This is what the book says. So when the prophet said you are part and parcel, he understood and we were talking about a state. The degree, quantity, nature, and extent of interest in which a person has in real property is usually referred to as an estate. And it varies from absolute ownership down to naked possession. Oh, do you know what naked possession means? <laughs> Naked. See, absolute ownership. Don't that sound absolute? I have absolute ownership or something. That's a loyal title. Absolute ownership. Naked possession is what people think they have, like when they go register their car and they get a certificate of title, telling them that yeah, you got a they got a title somewhere, but you don't have the title. So you have naked possession. So yeah, you have a right to buy and sell his possession, but you really don't own it. You know what I'm saying? If they ever have a a, a real problem or a government problem or whatever, they can come and seize your naked possession. You dig? All right. In another sense, the state quote unquote, designates the property, real or personal, in which one has a right or interest. The subject matter of ownership, the corpus of property, thus we speak of a quote unquote valuable estate, quote unquote all my estate, quote unquote separate estate, quote unquote trust estate, etc. This also is the meaning in the classification of property into real estate, quote unquote, and personal estate, quote unquote. Right? So, when the prophet said, we are part and parcel of this said government, he was speaking about our estate. Simple as that. That's simple as one, two, three. And it's simple to see with your own eyes that part, part, and partial means the same thing. Peace and love. 